acerca de la vida y la muerte para todos nosotros. Me imagino en un mundo sin empatía, sin coexistencia, sin un futuro. Luego me imagino en una isla verde entre la oscuridad y un lugar para inspirarme, un lugar para mostrar que no es tan tarde. I think Costa Rica is a really great example of how these kind of initiatives can work. Um, conservation, regeneration, reforestation, that there is still hope and that we can still make a difference. 60s or 70s, Costa Rica was for destroying the forest. So they do that for economic activity. The government encouraged the people to do that. We used to have 20% of forests in Costa Rica. Right now we have a 70%. That's a lot. It's all green, lush. Our country is really tiny, but we have 65 different protected areas around all the country. Costa Rica is really just a place that for me signifies a new start and a new opportunity for everybody. Conservation of wildlife is really everything. Um, our ecosystems are the most important for the overall health of our planet. Giving us a lot of services that we don't normally see, but we use every day. Especially in biodiverse areas where we have such a huge number of species um, that are contributing to keeping uh, the waters healthy, the coastal systems healthy. Our philosophy is that we need to protect the forest and the forest is going to protect the animals. Protecting the forest, we protect all the animals. Protecting the forest, we protect the water. And it is a shame. That's why we have to protect the whole ecosystem. Yeah, there's a lot of palm oil plantations um, in Costa Rica. It's a problem because it destroys completely the soil. It takes all the nutrients. And the reliance on just one, um, one crop has a big effect on uh, wildlife corridors and movement of different species. Um, and as a result, we just get a huge drop in biodiversity of all the wildlife species that we see in that area. Of rental has finished, they're left with land that is pretty much unusable. I think it's important, like, to create economical alternatives to not plant this kind of plantations. Imagine a lugar que esté conectado por el bosque, que dependa de él, desde lo más pequeñito hasta el ser más poderoso. Corcoval National Park, it's one of the most amazing places that we have in Costa Rica. One of the last tracts of a very wet tropical forest on the Pacific coast of Central America. So it's a big, big national park, nearly 50,000 hectares. There are like many different uh, ecosystems. We have mangrove forests, we have a uh, riparian forest, there are jolillo forests. There is even cloud forest in Corcoval. So Corcoval is found from sea level to 700, a little bit higher than 700 meters. 2.5% of the biodiversity of the world. It's in Osa Peninsula where Corcoval lies. So we need to protect this place because it holds so many species, so much biodiversity. All right, so I think Corcoval is a good example of conservation, not only because it protects all this biodiversity, but also because communities around the park benefit from it. If you want to protect nature, you need to involve the communities because if people is not involved in the conservation, you're gonna keep destroying the forest, right? So all these people that were hunting in the park, nowadays there's a lot of these people that are tour guides in Corcoa. All species of sea turtles are currently endangered, um, so there is a huge need at the moment for all kinds of conservation activities that we can do to protect their sea turtle nesting beaches and also out in the ocean as well. And a lot of people think that, okay, the rainforests are the lungs of the world, but actually more than 50% of the oxygen we breathe is produced in the ocean by algae, by plankton, you know, so we need to protect all the forests, the fauna, and of course the ocean too, right? What I found is that some of the most beautiful and diverse places on the world are also the most vulnerable. And the rapid increase of tourism in a place can break it if not handled well. It's impossible to have conservation without money. Uh, the conservation needs people, needs money. Um, so there's a lots of different examples of countries that have really high, high biodiversity, but their economy is suffering. 
And I think Costa Rica is a real pioneer in how to bring those two things together. It can be like a brand for the whole country. Conservation is really just management of human activity and from trying to find solutions for people that are still needing to depend on natural resources for survival, get them involved in conservation um, and use all of those skills that they have to work with nature. We think that it's really important that it comes from the base of the communities. Local people that have learned about it, they have empowered themselves. I think it really makes a change for the future of the communities. Tortuguero National Park is one of the most popular around all the country, but not always was a national park. All the first worker, the first local, eating iguanas, pecari, sea turtle, so it was a big shock to him why they kill the animals and not preserve. And they go to our government to let you know about this special place. So at that time was when our government decided to create a national park here in Tortuguero. A lot of different species, more than 400 different birds, basilis, iguana, crocodiles, armadillos, it's infinite. We live practically together. As you know, everything is part of the chain. I really love this country. Costa Rica is one of the only uh, countries without army because uh, our government preferred to spend its money in schools, also like national park, we have 65 different protected areas around all the country. Costa Ricans, they are very proud of their country. They are very proud of having all the biodiversity that they have, and then they try to protect it. It's not all perfect, but it is rooted in the Costa Rican culture. For me, nature means enjoying life in a park. It is actually very attached to the world of Pura Vida. Yeah, it's a very Costa Rican word. Pura comes from pure, and vida is life. For me, uh, my work is, is the Pura Vida life. While I'm protecting, while I'm teaching them about Costa Rica. In 1986, the month of early conservation we starts. One year later, there was a biologist who knew about the project, and she was invited to give a class to children in Quito. And in those years in Costa Rica, there was a lot of deforestation. Uh, she was explaining this to the little kids. And the children of Sweden, they gave the idea of selling cookies, lemonades, and the money that they recollect, they send it to the league. And the idea of those children went to 44 more countries. And in the first four years, they could get the 80% of what is right now. The new generations are really, really important. It's the, exactly what can save the forest. So we try to, to teach that generation. So if there's one thing that I want our future generation to hear, it will be that the real wealth lies in the resources of the earth, soil, water, forest, minerals, and wildlife. People can never like protect something that they don't know. When you learn more, about the wildlife, you start to understand and you start to like more. Corpoal is in my heart, it's part of my life. When I do wildlife photography, I feel like living in the moment, kind of spend hours and all you feel like I was minutes. And when you realize that anything that you are photographing in wildlife is alive and can be in any moment disappear. At the same time, it's why you do this, because you want to show to the people that it's wonderful, amazing and worth to conserve. Uh, but you need to go and ask to the local governments uh, do some activities. Like for example, they can go for uh, clean rivers, clean beaches, and you can start to be like an agent of change. Um, and that has a knock-on effect and impact onto other people in your life. More quantity of people is starting to change his mind to trying to protect him. It can be an example for other countries to do the same and preserve wildlife and nature. And we have just one planet, so. It's really important that everyone does absolutely everything that they can. And from these kind of small actions is where we can get the really big uh, results and really big changes. Esto es acerca de la vida y la muerte para todos nosotros. Necesitamos estar juntos, levantar la voz y tomar acciones 
para poder redirigirnos a un futuro y salvarnos. <risa>